Okay, guys. Um, so yesterday I had you guys do a little activity in class. Um, let me adjust this. Screen's a little bit funky. Okay, so yesterday I gave you guys this equation here, and I asked you guys to graph it. Um, wanna I want to review some things with you guys really quick here. Um, so you don't need to write this. I just want you guys to watch. But I think I had you guys plug in one first, right? Um, what what did you get when you plugged in one? And then two. What was it? It goes in reverse order. It's up there if you guys. Right. Okay. So now we kept doing that until we got up to like this. Right? So what were some things that we noticed about this? Um, how would you guys describe what's happening here in this table? Uh, excellent. <coughs> it's like they're they're kind of like flopped, right? Like 120 is up here, right? It's also here, but they're just reversed, right? Same thing here, 260, 62. Goes in the opposite direction. That's another way, good way of putting it. Um, here's another way we can say it. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller, right? Or as y gets bigger, x gets smaller. Okay, they have that inverse relationship, being opposite. And th these are actually called inverse variations for that reason. Huh? Oh, you're doing this? Okay. Uh, feel free to grab it. Not my mic, apparently. <laughs> How about over here behind Sasha? She's in the pink shirt. All right. So... Um, you got way too excited about that, Mike. I couldn't do it. Anything that makes you happy has got to be bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. You want to be sad first? All right. So, now guys, when we graphed it, as you guys can see up there, here's what happened, right? Um, as X gets bigger, meaning as I go to the right, Y got smaller. It got flatter, right? And as as y as x got closer to zero, right? X gets closer to zero this way. The y just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and so we got this shape. But I also had you guys do a table for the negatives. All the numbers were identical. It's just that the the left half was all negative, right? So it ended up down here. And that that's the graph that you guys see up there on the wall. These, these are called inverse variations. Okay. Um. So. I'm highlighting the axes here right now for a reason. The reason why is this. Um, what if I tried plugging in 0 for x? Uh, no. You can't divide by 0. You're not allowed to. It's undefined. So x can't equal 0. So I'm trying to get closer and closer to 0. This is where x equals 0, this purple line. I'm trying to get there, but I can't. Because every time I plug in a number that's closer and closer, the y value just shoots up more. It's like an invisible force field that can't reach. Yep, yep, and gets closer and closer. That's what we call an asymptote, okay? Um, the same thing applies for this way. As x gets bigger and bigger, the y value gets closer and closer to this purple line, but it'll never get there. In other words, there's no number big enough that you could possibly pl plug in for x, even if you plugged in a million. Your calculator might just say it's zero, just like who cares? It's so small it might as well be zero. But if you divide 120 by a million, that's not going to be zero. It's going to be an extremely small number, but it won't be zero. So what happens is as x gets bigger and bigger, the y gets closer and closer to zero, but it never gets there. And that's what we call a horizontal asymptote. So an asymptote is a line your graph approaches but never reaches. Okay? So that's what we learned yesterday. So today. Our, our objective is this. We're going to take a graph like this. Excuse me. Grab that. 
I feel it. Sure thing. There, that's where you guys are going to go. All right, so we're going to take an equation like this and we're going to do some transformations. We're going to maybe make it negative and see what that does. We're also going to maybe subtract the number from the x and see what that does and maybe add a number out here and see what that does. Okay, and that's what you guys copied down on the last slide. Whether this is a positive or a negative, and you have a number here and here, what does that do to that graph that you guys see up there on the ceiling? And they're just transformations, that's all it is. So that's our goal for today. Um, so without any further ado, let's actually begin our notes here. So part A, unit 7, you guys, is all about these things called rational expressions. So let's first of all talk about what that is. What is a rational expression? So go ahead and start writing with me now. You didn't have to write that last slide. You did. What is a rational expression? Well, basically, it's like when you have a polynomial being divided by another polynomial. Polynomial. And that's a rational expression. I'll put RE for short, rational expression. So, like, here's an example of one. Suppose you had this x squared minus 5x plus 3 over x plus 2. That's a rational expression. No, I, I win. All right, so that's a rational expression. Um, so we're going to do all kinds of stuff with them, but that's that. So now you can graph rational expressions, but it's actually pretty tough. There's a lot to go into it, like with my pre-calculus classes. We spend probably about four or five lessons just to get them to the point where they can graph rational expression. Pretty tough. But there is one special kind of rational expression, which is pretty uh, a more basic one, which is a little bit easier. That's the one we're going to graph in here. Now, if you take pre-count extra, I'll show you how to graph the other one. But the basic one we're going to graph is the one that I showed you at the beginning of class. It's that guy. Okay? Um, so, I think... We're ready to begin here. So, um, well, not quite. Let's let's do this. So we did this yesterday in our class. Um, we graphed one of these, right? And here's what it looked like. Yeah. So that's what these types of functions look like. That they always look like that. Okay. Um, let's draw a little arrow here, and we'll say this is the vertical asymptote. Um, I'll, I'll color it so we can see it. So the vertical asymptote for this is the y-axis. And then there's also a horizontal asymptote, which in this case is the x-axis. So we'll draw that too. And what, what an asymptote is. Have we talked? We haven't talked about asymptotes in here yet, have we? Okay. So let's, let's write a little note about that just for the heck of it. What is an asymptote? A line that never touches the, a line that never touches the either axis. Great, that's it. Well, it's not necessarily the axis, but it's either a, it, it actually could be a diagonal, but I never get into those. So basically, it's a line, though, that your, your graph gets closer and closer to, but never touches. Okay, so... A line your graph gets closer and closer to, but never reaches or never touches. This won't be the last time we've talked about asymptotes in here. We'll we'll do it again. 
You probably did it already in algebra one when you guys did exponential functions last year. I am Oh, good, good. Well, that's okay. Does, does, does the word asymptote sound familiar to anybody at all? A little bit? Yeah. I think you mentioned it once or twice, but you never. I said it? Such an amazing teacher. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Now, before we begin our, our actual lesson for the day, um, I want you guys to know that vertical asymptotes always have the <coughs> equation y equals some number. In this case, it's zero. And horizontal asymptotes, oh, I, I totally got that wrong. Sorry. It's x equals. It's confusing because it's, it's a vertical asymptote, so you'd think it's y, but it's not. Vertical lines are x equals the number. So why is that? Because... No matter what point you pick on this line, you guys, what's the x value? It's zero. So for every point on that line, x equals zero. And for every point on this line, what? The y equals zero. There you go. So horizontal asymptotes will always have an equation of form y equals some number, in this case, zero. Or the vertical asymptotes will always have an equation of the form x equals some number, in this case, zero. But notice I'm saying in this case, because it's not always going to be like that. I'll, we're going to. We're going to change it up a little bit. But there you guys go. So the graph of y equals a over x looks like this. It has a vertical asymptote with this equation and a horizontal asymptote with this equation. Okay. Now let's go ahead and build on that knowledge a little bit. That's just kind of like formalizing the stuff that we learned yesterday. Let's, let's go ahead and build on that a little bit. Let's review transformations. Yeah, it works. Let's review our transformations. Given the function f of x, what is this? What happens to your function when you put a negative in front of it like that? It flips it upside down. So negative f of x is a vertical reflection. Um, it can't hurt. But um, it's you could get by without it because we're gonna make take this general knowledge and make it more specific to the type of function we're doing today in a minute. So negative f of x takes that function, whatever it is, and flips it upside down. What does this do? Mm, no. Wait, Yeah. So if it's plus, it moves up. So like if you take your function f of x and you add a number to it, whatever your graph is, like let's say it's parabola. If you add a number to that, it just lifts it up. That's all it does. If you subtract a number from it, it moves it down. Okay, the last transformation we're going to look at today is this. What happens when instead of adding a number or subtracting a number from the function, what about when you add or subtract a number from the x, only the x part? That's left and right. Okay. If it's plus, it moves it. Yes, left. And if it's negative, it moves it right. Now that's just review. That's stuff from last semester. And I'm going to show you what that does to our graph. Huh? Negative is right. Yeah. Yeah. So we these are the three types of transformations that we're going to be doing today to that y equals a over x function, okay? Sure. Uh, C, C. No, now you're on, you're on D now. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, so we're going to take, we're going to build on our knowledge here a little bit. We had this, right? We, we talked about that graph. But now we're going to talk about the difference between whether this is positive or negative. That'll flip it or not, right? We're also going to talk about what happens when you subtract a number from the x. All that's going to do is shift it to the left and right, correct? And then we're also going to talk about what happens if you add a number out here, and all that's going to do is shift it up and down. So it's the same basic shape, but it's just going to be getting shifted around or flipped upside down, give or take. That's it. Yeah, so that's our lesson for the day. So let's go ahead and, and write this again. So we're pretty much just transforming just a little more complicated. That's it. That's it. It's just transformations. So it shouldn't be too bad. 
Um, so now before we transform it, what look at you have to look at your notes for this. What was the um, vertical asymptote? Oh, x, x, equals, x equals zero. If I if I subtract a number from x, that shifts it which way? Right. Right. So instead of being zero, it'll be whatever that number is. Okay? So if my asymptote was at zero and I put a minus h next to my x, that's going to shift it to the right. So now my asymptote, like if it was x minus 5, my asymptote will go from being zero to 5. Everything gets shifted over. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what this number tells you here is the vertical asymptote, basically. It used to be zero, but because of the shift, now we know our vertical asymptote is going to be at h. So the vertical asymptote will be at x equals h. Notice it's the opposite sign again. Remember that? If this is negative, it's going to be positive. Remember that? It's always been like yeah. that with transformations. How about this guy here? This number shifts it up and down. So I used to have a horizontal asymptote, which was y equals 0, right? If I shift it up, k k spaces, what will my horizontal asymptote be? K. Okay. So this is my horizontal asymptote. It's y equals k. Notice this one, you do not change the sign, just like always. So the one with the x, you change the sign. The one that's not with the x, the other one, that one stays the same. So it's kind of like um, vertex form, just the a's on top of Exactly. Yep, because it's the same idea. It's just transformations. Nice. I was looking at Alexis's slimes playing with, and I was enthralled with it. All right. Um, okay, so check this out. I want you to circle that. We're going to draw something else now. So if it's positive, we already know what the shape looks like. It looks like this, right? But if it's negative, doesn't that flip it upside down? So if it's positive, this is what it looks like. But if it's negative, it's going to look like this instead. This piece will be down here, and this piece will be up here instead. Same basic shape, but it's just reversed because it gets flipped upside down. It's kind of like with um when we did the you know it's called I actually saw it's called the one you would go up and right or up and left. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, like Those were cube nice job, yeah. Okay. Cubes and square root functions, yeah. All right, can I proceed? No, yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're on E. So steps for graphing. One more thing I want to do before we get started, just give you some steps. We haven't even started yet. We're just building the building up to it. We're halfway through the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. All right. Here we go. You guys ready? <coughs> Step one. Why do you not write? Sure. Oh. Step one is I want you guys to graph the horizontal asymptote, which is y equals k. So we're going to draw a horizontal line first. Step two, we're going to graph the vertical asymptote. which is x equals h. So those are our first two steps. Graph your horizontal, graph your vertical. The last thing we have to do is put those little shapes on there. Decide which shape you're using. So if your A is a positive number, then it's going to look like this with your asymptotes. If your A is a negative number, then it's going to look like this. I would. I know it's like it seems very repetitive from the last slide. The last slide was more like what? This is more like how. 
but they really do go closely together. All right, now, here we go, example time. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is what your homework's going to look like. homework you guys you're going to have an equation like this it's going to ask you three things it's going to say what's the horizontal ver asymptote what's the vertical asymptote and it's going to ask you to graph it so here we go let's start off with horizontal asymptote now as i mentioned to you guys the horizontal asymptote is this number here and it's y equals that number so that's my horizontal asymptote pay attention i need my pen all right, the next thing, vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote, I'll draw an arrow here. You guys might want to do that in your notes just to know where it comes from. Wouldn't that be negative one? Good. So the, vertic the vertical asymptote comes from this number, but you got to remember it's the opposite of that number, so it's negative one. Okay? So my horizontal asymptote is y equals negative two. My vertical asymptote is x equals negative one. Now we're going to do the last thing, which is graph it. Okay, so here we go. Let's plot the, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis. What is my horizontal asymptote? Yes. Um, negative 2. It's negative 2. So we're going to go down 2, and I want you guys to put a horizontal dotted line there. That's my horizontal asymptote. I'm, I'm writing a bunch. Should I not do that? <laughs> negative 2. No, dotted good. And then what's my vertical asymptote? Negative one. So I'm going to go left one on the x-axis, and I'm going to make a vertical line. And that's my vertical asymptote. All right, now we're going to do the shape. So does this thing have a positive or a negative in front of it? Negative. So when it's negative on this side, flip that side. It goes like this. It's up here. And on this side, it goes like this. Notice that it's not against the asymptotes anymore, right? Because my ask or the x and y axis. So the bottom one Because it got be shifted. Well, it, it's the, 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 it will always look like it's touching it because it gets so close you can't even tell. But the idea is technically no, it never reaches that line. It gets closer and closer because that's what an asymptote is. So, three step process. What's your horizontal? What's your vertical? Put the shape on there. Okay, wait, can you just explain how to, how to, like, how? No, just, just with the graphics. How I knew it was shape? Because of this. If the A is a positive number, then it looks like this curve on the top right. Because ours has a negative in front of it. And There's a how'd negative. You shift it? Huh? Um, I don't know if that. These, these are the asymptotes. If that's what you mean. Those green lines. Those are your asymptotes. That makes it look like you got shifted. We'll do another one. Watch this one and don't throw pen. No, I'm not going to pen. Mr. Bailey. I'll be. I'll see you in a second. Okay, this is a guided practice. I want you guys to do this. So first of all, I want you guys to find these two things for me. Find your horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Go ahead. So think of this like diamond force, right? So you think about those are asymptotes, and this one that's the your asymptotes. So your curves need to stay sideways. Oh, okay. These glasses here, those are your axes. Up here, the axis.
axes were the axes. But because I got the shit, now my axes are not. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Check your answer with a neighbor. You're supposed to be writing down what your horizontal asymptote is, what your vertical asymptote is. Okay, I'm going to help hand and we're going to get started. So if you're ready. You don't tell them to shirt it down. This one. Okay, let's uh see here. I'm gonna Sasha, what'd you get for your horizontal asymptote? Okay. Let's try Adrian. What'd you get for your horizontal asymptote? Uh, one. One. I agree, but can you say something equals one? What what equals one? Y. Horizontals are y equals, but you got the number right. Okay, LaFontaine, what's the vertical asymptote? <laughs> Notice that with ver vertical, it's x equals. Also, it's the opposite of that number, so it's a positive 2. Now, I want you guys to graph those. So here's your x-axis and y-axis, but I want you guys to graph these asymptotes. It will look like a new set of axes. I did. So go ahead and graph those. Okay. That, that's it for now. We're going to do one more thing after that. All right, guys. So um, your vertical, at, your horizontal asymptote should have been at y equals 1. Your vertical asymptote should have been at x equals 2. So that's what that should have looked like. Now, the last thing I want you guys to do is I want you to put the curves on there. You only have two choices. It's either... It's either top left, bottom right, or it's bottom left, top right. So it's based on whether this is a positive or negative. So look at your notes to see if you can figure it out. Yeah. So it's Okay, so let's see, I'm going to ask uh, Leslie. On this side of the graph, is it on the top or the bottom? Bottom. I agree. Looks like that. This one looks like that. There's your graph. And that's because the A is a positive 5. So it's that shape. Okay? Um, yeah. Well, it, to our eyes, it will look like that. But in our minds, we know it doesn't. Right? Like, I can get... Like, you could tell I'm not touching this, right? Yeah. But if you were to... Huh? That's because I'm being lazy. It's not supposed to touch it. Yeah. 
But the point is, is that like if somebody was standing a mile away from me and they had binoculars, you know, it would look like I'm touching this when I'm not. It was so close compared to how far away they are. Same thing with us. They get really so close, your eyes cannot tell. It's literally not touching it. That's it for today. Yeah. So, but I, I want to throw in a couple of ideas here. Let me ask you this: What if H or K is missing? So that's right. So if H or K are missing, so for instance, if you have this, um, 1 over x plus 2, right? Well, what that really means is, it would be 0. So you're, what that means then is, is if you're, no, it's just F. Uh, yeah, F, thank you. What if H or K is missing? Then there'll be zero. Here's another one. How about if we had this? One over X plus four with nothing right here, right? Then it's going to be zero again. And it doesn't matter if you said it's positive or negative, it's still zero. Yeah, zero is just zero. So signs don't really matter. Okay? So if you're missing H or K, just know there's zero. But other than that, everything else is the same. Okay? Is this all? Yeah, I'm going I'm to just practice some completely on your own, but that's, that's your homework. Yeah. How many are going to be on the board? Hmm? How many are going to be on the board? Uh, six. Oh, do you think you can put the homework on the board? Do you think you can put the homework on the board? Well, I'm, I want you guys to practice some while you're in class so I can make sure you guys are getting it, see if there's some issues coming up. But I'm not teaching you anything else after this. I could do that. You guys want to do some homework problems? Yeah. 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 On your homework. How many are there? Six. They don't use y, they're using f of x, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't change anything. Okay, so I'm going to um, give you guys a couple minutes for this one. Um, your homework wants you to do three things they want you to find the horizontal asymptote, they want you to find the vertical asymptote. All right. So tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Right. See ya. Thank you. What are we looking at? Wait, are you getting another? Let's see here. Kayla, what's the horizontal asymptote? Good. All right. Natalie, what's our vertical asymptote? Good. So if we graph this, um, I, I said I was going to call somebody up, but I might just. I'll go graph it. All right. Come on up and graph it for me. I don't know how to ask the question of this. You just kind of have to do it. I think the issue I'm seeing, though, that's most likely to get you guys is remembering which one's horizontal, which one's vertical, right? And you graph it. Kind of good, but you don't have your your asymptotes on there. Yeah, so your vertical's here, right? But your horizontal should have been here. So this one I would have come down a little bit more like that. Yeah. There you go. It's right shape. So wait, once again, um, if there is a number there, like next to X, it's going to be um, opposite? Yeah. All right. Um, we have lots of time, so I'll give you guys your next homework problem. Number two. Well, I mean, I, I'm here to help you now. All right, let's do the same questions, but this time with f of x is equal to negative 4 over x plus 2 minus 2. Try that one. <coughs> 